Hey, what is up guys? Welcome to NZJ Group where tech, lifestyle, sports and entertainment are all discussed. Uh, today we'll be talking about Habib vs. Gaethje. I'm Malik and I'm joined by my friend Mustafa. Hey Mustafa, how's it going? Uh, what do you think about the stylistic matchup between the two? I mean, I'm I'm so super excited for, like, for this match. And hopefully this happens like this September or August. I'm excited, but I'm not excited. But there's no fans in the studio anymore, though. That's that's gonna be awful. We should we should bring some fans in that game. So, I'm, I'm... let's see how it goes. Out fans. I hope I hope I hope it's just like it should be just as interesting as fans will be in there. So, I hope that effect on the fighters that much. I totally get you as well. Like there are actually pros and cons to both, like having fans, uh, fans as well as not having fans. Fans. Like the good thing is that Gaethje's fighting style, if you have watched his highlights, like it's ferocious. Like it, it's super wild. Like he he loves violence. Like it's always like a brawl style with him. Even though he became more technical like recently, but like he has having fans and like if, uh, like missing fans like is like it's a, it's a big blow like to the UFC. But on the good side of it is like. We know that, like, if you don't he's have fans, won. if you don't have, he's still won. Uh, sorry, like he still won without fans. Like Gage still won. Like it was, it wasn't a problem for Gage to be honest no, without no. fans. Because the like without, without... Yeah, like without yeah, with... fans, like he, they can actually for, uh, concentrate more. Like they can hear what their coaches are trying to say. You know, right. it's gonna it's gonna help Gaethje a lot more because Habib, like he is he is always using the same game plan. Like he doesn't need to hear a lot like what his coach basically says. Like Habib will basically be pushing you towards the cage and then work his way from there. But Gaethje definitely needs like his corner's advice. You know, that's why. But Habib could listen to corner uh, to Gage corner advice as well. <laughs> <laughs> that could be that that could be an advantage as well, not always a disadvantage. So here you go. That's also a game plan for Khabib to. Listen to the other corner, maybe you know. Oh yeah. But see, always when I see, when I saw the fight with Khabib, always like uh, his corner told me it's, it's time to k- to get your opponent on the ground. So stop stop using a target. Just go to the ground. So I think that's that's gonna that's gonna make a much difference now since everybody could hear them now. So yeah, the pl- the plan will be different now. So I think yeah, I think Khabib would better without any coaching this time. He's just gonna go do it right away with because yeah, as we said, like everybody could hear him in the. In the arena. Yeah. So now the question is that the main question: Who's your pick? I'll go with Khabib straight up, hands oh. down. I, I well, for this part, I will like uh, go with Gaethje. I mean, he recently like impressed me a lot. Like when he beat Tony Ferguson, like when he was a big underdog, you know. I mean, I could be wrong if I'm choosing like Gaethje because Khabib's record, we all know that it looks outstanding, 28 and 0. Like undefeated, right. never lost a round. I mean, the la- the last time when he lost that one round is still debatable. It was super close. But out, yeah. out of everyone, I personally believe that Gaethje can pull off that upset. Like, you know why? Because he does have that strong uh, wrestling background, like NCAA Division One champion during the university and his time. Uh, he has some ferocious like kicks. Like if you have watched his like his fights against uh, Eddie Alvarez, uh, Barboza. Uh, Cowboy Cerrone or Dustin Poirier, like he always uses his kicks and it's so so brutal. Like three to four kicks to Habib's calf, that's gonna slow down Habib's yep. momentum and pushing yep. you to uh, and pushing you towards the cage, you know? Because yep. n- yeah, these recently actually I've noticed that like these low kicks are becoming more common because your calf has less meat, but your hip has more meat, so your calf is more sensitive. Like it becomes unbearable after three to four kicks. So I'm not so sure if yeah. yeah. I'm not sure if if uh, Gechi can maintain and implement his game plan because Habib is Habib, you know. But if he can do that, kudos to him, and he will, he can. He, out of everyone, I believe that he can beat Habib. But if he cannot, I, I'm not gonna be surprised, you know. Uh, like, they are, I think people underestimated Khabib's striking game, but after Conor fight, I think Khabib got, gained a lot of respect in his striking game. I, I think I don't think Khabib would find a problem. Out of that, still like his his striking game was with Conor was actually phenomenal. Like Conor is one of the best strikers in the world, right? But still, he he pulled a very great match, even in the third round. Like it was a co- yeah. close call, it wasn't that bad. Yeah. So yeah. I think it, yeah, Khabib won't find a problem. He could dodge them always, and he always dodges. Actually, he always keeps a distance between the fighter, and he just goes to the ground game whenever he sees a gap in there, and he just goes goes into it. But yeah, it's gonna be because he's gonna use his legs this time. So. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be different. Kavi should come up with a strategy that would allow him to maneuver his way into into his opponent's hips, I guess, and take him down. 
Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be interesting. Uh, like, Hab- the, what makes Habib striking more like effective is because this is wrestling. People are usually scared of his wrestling. That's why they keep their hands low, and they they don't actually expect the shots. You know, the exactly. they, they don't expect any punches. Like uh, that's why like Conor was super surprised like with that right overhand. Uh, mm. uh, so like with Gaethje, like he's a power puncher. Like I'm not gonna, I'm not entirely sure that I don't think so. Uh, Habib is gonna is willing to take that risk, you know, stand toe to toe. Definitely, he will push Gaethje towards that cage and uh, work on his wrestling because Gaethje is much, much like. I mean, they're both like both Conor and uh, Gaethje. When Habib gets, gets to Gaethje, when he gets him hold all of those legs, he's done. Yes. <laughs> when the, when, when, yeah, because Gaethje has no experience in the ground game. I could tell oh, you yes. that. Oh, yes. No, 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 oh, yeah. no, no. Yeah, he doesn't he use it really. Trust over. me. I, I did my research. I know he, he, he was an NCAA Division One champion. Like, it, the thing that okay. we don't know about it, how effective his wrestling is because he doesn't really use it. Like, when he started MMA, yeah. uh, his background was in wrestling. For the first five, uh, for the first uh, of his MMA fights, like he was relying entirely like on his wrestling. After that, he got like uh, more effective with his striking because he hired like a, a striking coach as well. But I do believe that uh, we haven't seen it, but I do believe that he has a strong defensive wrestling. But against Habib, it's super hard, you know, because I forgot to mention that Habib trains at AKA gym, you know, American right. Kickboxing Academy is trained like uh, it's run by Javier Mendes. And they like he has trained like world champions like Kane Velasquez heavyweight, uh, DC heavyweight, Luke Rockhold middleweight champion. I mean these guys are so huge and enormous like big 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 individual. Like imagine like Habib has already felt the strength of these bigger stronger dudes, you know. So when we yeah, see, uh, yeah, we, we should actually find Habib actually. He didn't fight for a long time right now, so I think that also would affect Khabib in, in a way or another because he's he's like Gagey just fought right recently, but Khabib hasn't hasn't been on that arena for from 2019, right? So yeah, I think I think I think that's gonna be also a challenge for Khabib to come back, especially he wasn't actually training at all for the past month, but he got actually recently on the training boot camp and he's actually posting some pictures yes. on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. And, I but fall. still, there are some. Actually, there are many factors in this game. Actually, I was thinking about even Khabib's father in this yeah, case, like getting. Yeah. Still, I don't think it would affect his mentality or. In I, some way I, or I another. hope not. I hope not. I hope not because, like, I know, like, his father being in hospital, like, that could actually have some mental effects. Like, you know, because the fight is in. The fight. Dana has said that they, they want the fight to happen like in September or August or October, right. the very last. Like, but I hope like everything goes well for his family. You know. Because we don't yeah, want we, we don't want Habib to be in a disadvantageous position because if something God God forbid like if, if something happens to his family you know probably he will vacate the title he he's not gonna fight you know Make but that, I hope yeah. not either yeah but I hope yeah, exactly. not yeah. yeah and he always he always his father is always fierce like he always gets like who trained you like my father I gained this from my father so it's, it's a yeah. huge role model for Khabib so. I think yeah. it's it is gonna affect a, a huge role if something happens to I hope not but as you said you know. Let's, yeah. let's keep our prayers with his father. Hopefully, he gets he gets out of this soon. Yeah, yeah, true. I I I, I agree as well. Hopefully, yeah, yeah. And then, do you also know this interesting thing about this fight? Both Habib and Gaethje, they are trained. They are actually managed by the same manager, Ali Abdulaziz. <laughs> right. <laughs> it has, it is actually, but they don't have any beef between them, do no, they? No, 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 yeah. no, 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 no. Yeah, that's, like, that's good. That's good. Like with Abdul Hadi, with Abdulaziz, like this has happened in the past as well. Like I think it was again, like, like Josie. Uh, sorry, Henry Sahudu fighting Marlon Samuels for bantamweight championship belt. Like basically, like, Habib uh, took him, like got himself like out of the equation. Like he he didn't actually stand in between the two fighters. So he has said the same thing uh, for Justin and Habib. Like he doesn't want to be in the in between them. Like if they want to fight, he will make it happen. But financially, that could be a good thing for him. You know? Yeah, exactly. You gotta make triple <laughs> double amount of money right there. Yeah, yeah. He will get like yeah. two. Yeah, he will he will get his portion twice. Once from Habib, once from Gaethje. But have you also uh, thought about like what's gonna happen if Habib wins or if Habib loses? Like you know both scenarios. Right, boss. Yeah, now this is a big point of argument. If Habib loses to this fight, would Dana White actually allow him? Will he allow for a rematch? Uh, but 
Let's think also of the probability of Khabib losing. I'll find the I'll find the chance of Khabib losing unless unless something goes wrong because you know you never know in MMA, you know. Yes. Maybe just a, a sudden left hand or a sudden kick would got you knocked down. So you yeah. never know. Yes. But still in the case of Khabib losing, I think the fans would want a rematch. The fans would want a rematch, but the thing is that I doubt that um so for the loose center, I doubt that Dana will give him like an immediate rematch, you know? Because Justin himself, like yes, like uh, yesterday I watched him on Joe Rogan podcast. He basically mentioned that if he beats Habib, he's gonna fight Conor next. That's it. And then after that, he wants to retire with uh, 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 with big cash of money. Uh, both so Habib, Tony, yeah, even so Habib Tony doesn't want to stay. Equation. Sorry. So Tony no longer in the equation with Khabib. That's it. Over yeah, the final, yeah, but... yeah. And uh. same for Habib. Like if he wins, I mean, uh, if he wins, he's gonna ask for a GSP fight. If he doesn't fight GSP, he probably will, he probably will retire. Like that's what he said. Like he doesn't want to stay in this game for for a longer period of time. Like both Justin and Gaethje, they don't want to stay. Like they probably they have like one or two fights left in, uh, according to them, like in their career. I think Khabib is done. I think Khabib proved his point. He's like 28 and all, 28 win streaks. I think he, he's good with that. Like he proved his his game and. Actually, he's he, like everybody admits he's one of the best in the world. So I think it's yes. more than enough for him. He bought everybody in this game under his weight division. So yes, yes. Yeah, I think he he like he he did more than enough. He and did. Yeah. But well, MMA would miss him still though, and his fans. So yes, for yeah. sure. Like even like people who miss Connor, you know, like these are like once in a lifetime athletes. But another thing I need to mention to you that if Habib loses. This could also potentially open the door for Habib versus Tony, and then both of them fighting for the number one contender spot. You know, say for example, Justin right. wins. Justin wins. He's gonna ask for Connor. Connor is gonna fight him. Uh, Habib then now has to fight Tony to get that uh, spot uh, back. You know, but who knows? Right. You know, this is MMA. I yeah. feel Habib should retire anyways. Like he's still young. The guy is only thirty, so. I think he still have a long way to go, so I don't think. I think I, under, this, this, this I think I understand his mentality. Why he's saying that, you know, like he wants to retire undefeated, like the first athlete to retire undefeated. You know, thirty and zero or twenty nine and zero. That that means a lot. Like you know, just like having like a Floyd Mayweather's record, because he has right. taken the least amount of punishment, least amount of damage. You know, out of everyone, actually. Habib, like, the funny thing about Habib is that he takes more damage during the practice session than the fight arms itself, <laughs> you know? <laughs> that's the thing. I think that's exactly the reason of Habib, like, I was always thinking, like, why Habib have 28 win streaks? streaks? Like, why why that? Actually, I think most of that is just about training. I know he trains hard, and, like, I I saw one, one video, he said, like, trains almost 30, uh, almost, like, like the entire day he, he trains, like, the entire yeah. day. So I was thinking, not, not even training, actually. It comes to spirituality. He also actually a very spiritual guy. He always posts on on, on Instagram spiritual yeah. things and yeah, he always have like a spirituality into his games and he always like this defeats is I I think is whatever like it's not about an ego in this case. I think he yeah he believe he believes in the overall power that he's gonna win. Like he always have this in mentality in his mentality that like he's always gonna win. And as he said, he said when whenever the cage closes, I don't see nobody in this cage except my <laughs> opponent. Like so yeah, yeah he's always focusing. Right, so yeah. Yeah, Th that's the thing I love. I love about Habib. Like he's a man of his word. He's a man of his principles. Like when he says that he does this, he will do it. You know, he wanted to fight Conor. He wanted to smash his face. He did it. Then he said, like, I'm not gonna fight Conor after that. Yeah, I will fight guys who are actually next in night, who are the real like contenders. Like he fought Dustin Poirier. Now he's he's planning to fight Justin Gaethje. Even though he made a lot of good money, and he can still like you know gonna go like he still can make some good money by rematching like Conor, but he's not doing that, you know. So he's a totally unique a fighter. The, I don't think there will be a point for the rematch with Conor, as we saw that like, the fight was one-sided. To be honest, <laughs> uh, uh, but if it's a money fight, Conor wants that. But I don't think Khabib is after the money. After all, he's like I made money, so I don't think he would accept this offer. Yeah, but I'm yeah. not sure. And, and, he knows, and, and he knows if he goes back to Connor, and Connor will will go back and talk shit to him, you know. Yeah. <laughs> this saga will start all over again, you know, jumping over the cage and stuff like that. I don't think Khabib wants that anymore. It was like a short Khabib evil side, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but Connor still like occasionally like posts like some trash about him and his family or his team members. Like occasionally, like 
I think Habib is still in Connor's head for some reason. Like, I don't know if you follow Connor, like, he's still mocking him. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, all right, so... Tell me, Mustafa, about your final final decision or final prediction. What's going to happen? You got Habib. Any predictions for it? Uh, yeah. I think Khabib would win the game. I think Khabib has a strong ground game. I think people underestimate his striking game, but he's good, actually. But by Both decision ends, or by a TK or by submission? I think by submission. Khabib always likes submission, but he would play, actually, with his opponent a little bit. <laughs> Just like with Conor. He would play with Gage a little bit. Like, I won't say in the first round. I would say, like, for the third or fourth round. Mm, but he'll be by submission. So I think Khabib will get this one down. Unless, but he should be careful also from sudden kicks or sudden punches because those kicks from Gage you could knock you down essentially or could hurt you severely. So he should be careful. Uh, what do you think? Uh, I think like I, I, I'm picking uh, Gage by fourth or third round TKO. I know I'm making a bold, bold prediction. <laughs> <laughs> but hopefully, yeah. So let's see. Let's see. Hopefully. All right, thank you so much, Mustafa. Uh, and Thanks that's all, much. folks. Yeah, let us know what you think in the comment section below. And don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe button for more. Peace.